Okay everyone, welcome back. Let's take a look at exactly how you can determine your longitude if you have a very accurate timekeeping piece, such as the marine chronometer that John Harrison created when he won the prize to determine longitude. So what he applied was the theoretical relationship between longitude and time. Let's take a look at this example right here. Here we've got a uh, dotted line here which represents our reference longitude. This is the longitude that we are going to consider zero. So this would be the prime meridian in the case of John Harrison because this is the British Empire. So they're running it uh, right through Greenwich and they've got the prime meridian right there. And it's local noon there. Now remember what local noon or astronomical noon means. It means that is the point uh, the point in time in which the sun is, is highest in the sky. When the sun is highest in the sky for you, it is your astronomical noon. So on this prime meridian, it is noon, the sun is highest in the sky, and we have a sailing ship here, and it's also on that same line of longitude, and so it is noon. So what they decided to do was outfit each one of the ship captains, each of these ship captains would be given a marine chronometer which was capable of highly, highly accurately keeping time. Now when you think about timekeeping pieces accurately keeping time, remember this is going to be put on an 18th century sailing ship. So it's going to encounter all kinds of weather, it's going to encounter all kinds of storms, the ship is going to be tossing, it's going to be rolling, and conventional timekeeping pieces at the time could not keep accurate time in those conditions. So you've got to have a very robust clock, one that is capable of withstanding this kind of operational environment. And so what they said is, we'll take one of John Harrison's marine chronometers, or John Harrison said, look, you take one of these highly accurate pieces that can keep time under the conditions at which the ships will be facing, and you synchronize the time with astronomical noon at your reference line. So if we're all sitting here on the prime meridian, give that ship captain on board that ship right there a marine chronometer and make sure that it is perfectly calibrated so that at local noon, at astronomical noon on that line, the clock shows noon exactly and then we will send the ship captain on his voyage. If the ship travels west, then local time for the ship will be behind the reference time. Okay? If the ship captain travels east, then the ship's local time will be ahead of the reference time. Think about this as the prime meridian. If we're looking at the prime meridian right here and we go east, then we start advancing in time. You probably recognize that uh, from other uh, lessons that you've taken in other courses. If we start going west, then we are going earlier in time. Okay, so that's what's going to happen to the ship. But remember, he's got a clock that is perfectly uh, synchronized with the reference time along this line. So here we go. Here's the ship captain going west. So we know that the time that he is experiencing on board that ship will be behind the reference time. Okay, so let's take a look at this with the ship captain out on the ocean and needing to determine his longitude. If he needs to determine his longitude, then what he needs to do is go out onto the deck of his ship at local astronomical noon, wherever he is. So that's the situation that we've got right here. The ship captain is uh, on his deck, Right now is local noon. The sun is highest in the sky wherever he is, okay? So he knows what time it is for him. It is noon for him and all of his ship right at that very moment. But then he takes a look at the chronometer, which is set to the time at the prime meridian, that reference time. And let's say for the sake of example, he sees that the timepiece shows 3 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, 3 o'clock p.m. So he knows that it is 3 o'clock p.m. at the prime meridian. So back at the uh, Greenwich Observatory, it is not noon, it is 3 o'clock p.m. Therefore, he will know his longitude. Three hours. He is three hours behind the reference time. It's noon for him right now because he's looking at the sun highest in the sky. He knows that it is currently three o'clock in the afternoon at the prime meridian. He knows that the 
Earth rotates at 15 degrees per hour. He is three hours behind. Three times 15 equals 45 degrees. He's behind the reference time. The ship is therefore positioned 45 degrees west of the reference time. So if that reference time is on the prime meridian, the ship must be located at 45 degrees west. That is how they ended up determining longitude. Let's look at this example right here. What if the ship went east? Okay, the ship captain is still going to look up at the sky at his astronomical noon, so he knows that it is noon for him right now at that very moment. Then he looks down at his chronometer. For the sake of example, let's say he looks at the chronometer and he finds that it is 10 o'clock, 10 in the morning, 10 o'clock in the morning at the prime meridian. And that's the reference time that that chronometer is set for. Therefore, he knows if the Earth spins at a rate of 15 degrees per hour, he is two hours uh, ahead, in this case, of the reference time. Two times 15 equals 30. The ship is 30 degrees east of the reference time because he is ahead of the reference time. And therefore, the ship is located at 30 degrees east. If you understand this concept and you understand and you are able to know the reference time at a given position and you're able to check your local noon, your local astronomical noon, then you will be able to determine how many degrees east or west based on whether you are behind or ahead of the reference time you are from that location. And this is really how longitude is even calculated today. Uh, this was the solution. This is the easiest, most practical way to do this, uh, and it continues on today. If you take a look here, uh, this is the U.S. Naval Observatory. The United States Navy is the one that maintains the highly, highly accurate atomic clock for the United States. Well, why in the world is the U.S. Navy so interested in knowing so precisely what time it is? Why would they be the ones who run a clock uh, that is so highly accurate? Well, it's not because they're afraid they're going to be a microsecond late for something. It's because they are trying to coordinate naval operations across the entire planet. And in order to be able to do that effectively, just like the British Admiralty during the time of the British Empire in the age of wooden ships and sail, if you're trying to coordinate operations across the planet, the knowledge of your longitude is absolutely essential. So... Since we still do that through time, the U.S. Navy is the particular department of the U.S. government that maintains a highly accurate reference clock. And now, because we have both latitude and longitude, we're going to be able to determine our position on the planet, uh, which is incredibly important for geography, cartography, and geographic information systems. And I think that it's very important that anyone who is involved in GIS understand how one determines position on the planet and it is through the system of latitude and longitude and it is through these methods of calculations of latitude and longitude which even though we have more sophisticated ways of doing today still are theoretically the same way people have been doing them for hundreds or even thousands of years.